Hello. Okay, firstly, very importantly, someone left this in the bathroom. <laughs> of course it is. I don't know why I even bothered. <laughs> Okay, that's that sorted then. Thank you so much for coming. I can't believe we're here. I can't believe our first event is actually happening. It's fair to say there has been blood, sweat and tears going into this because, you know, it's something very close to my heart. But yeah, I just want to say thank you so much. So let's kick off our very first Just Groove event. Woo! I do have cards because I'm pretending to be professional, but the likelihood of me sticking to the cards is very slim. So as I go, do, 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 we'll just, you know, woo. <laughs> so hello everyone we've already done that one but we'll do it again um so just to explain a little bit about me so two years ago i actually lost my dad um to motor neuron disease which is what we are fundraising for but truthfully my journey with grief started two years prior i would say when he was diagnosed and considering one in 20 under 16 year olds have faced grief i think it's wild that it's not really spoken about online and that's why i wanted to do this event so we can all come together and openly talk about a topic that so many people go through <laughs> now i promise you're going to hear less from me because you know we really want to hear what they have to say so we're going to get started with the questions so i'm going to kick start with charlotte so do you want to tell us a little bit about why you're here and why you wanted to be a part i've just realized we need the other mic <laughs> I'm just gonna get the other mic. Okay, so I lost my granddad a couple of years ago at Christmas time to cancer. And I feel like that is a story a lot of us are unfortunately gonna be able to relate to. And I started sharing my journey online because I was worried um, about how I was feeling about it and how different I was to the rest of my family who also experienced the exact same thing. And I was like, am I is my experience wrong? Are my feelings wrong? Are they invalid? And although I'm quite comfortable talking to my family about my emotions, I think when the shock of grief hit me, I just became very silent. So I actually turned to the online world, which is kind of strange, but I knew that someone out there would be able to relate to me from seeing other people's grief content online. And I wanted to do that too, to hopefully be a safe space for someone to come and join us. And that's why I started The Grief Diaries, which is like a little sub-series on my podcast. I have different guests coming in every other week, sort of discussing their journey with grief, how it completely differs to mine, but that's absolutely okay. And we all experience different emotions. Um, and that's fine. <laughs> Do you think that sharing it online has helped you? <laughs> Ouchies. <laughs> Do you think sharing it online has helped you in your journey? Yeah, I think so, because it sort of brought that community and togetherness that I didn't sort of receive at home. Not that anyone intentionally made me feel uncomfortable, yeah. but because we all experienced and reacted to the grief in different ways, mm -hmm. I thought it, it, it gave me that safe space that I then wanted to create for other people. Yeah, I mean, I get that. Every time I post online, it almost feels like therapeutic. Yeah. I'm like, how is it that I'm posting about something so sad? Yeah, I feel better for posting it because you realise that you're not alone and that mm -hmm. other people are feeling the same way as you. Mm -hmm. So I do agree. How do you think we as a society can help people who are grieving? Because it goes back to that whole, it's not really spoken about. And like, obviously you are pioneering by talking about it online. What do you think others can do? I think continuing conversations, specifically to someone else who might have experienced loss, because I think we're scared to say like, how are you doing today? Um, bringing up someone else's loss like you don't really want to do it because you don't want to make them upset but I think nine times out of ten people do want to talk about yeah. it and they feel like a burden for speaking about their grief so we just like internalize it all um and I also saw a thing that one therapist said probably online somewhere about what is it comfort or solutions or distraction mm -hmm. which I absolutely love like if someone comes to you and they want to cry to you about their grief like do you want comfort do you want advice or do you just want to distract and do something different and I think that advice has really helped me yeah, um you mentioned that your granddad passed away around the Christmas time mm -hmm. do you have any advice on people navigating the holidays I can completely understand that it's you know every birthday you know every anniversary every Christmas it's tough so what would be your advice for that mm -hmm. kind of time of year Hmm, I think... The ho yeah, the holidays are really hard. Even though I've just like pioneered for social media being a great space, I actually think if you're going through an initial shock, like at Christmas time, social media is probably the worst place mm -hmm. to go to. So 
I find journaling really helpful for me. I know it's not for everyone, but writing down a diary of how I was feeling every day and noticing over time that I was feeling better mm -hmm. um, really helped me. So I don't know if that might work for someone else or another sort of similar creative way to document your journey and make it personalised to you that makes you realise that you are getting better over time because that was what I was worried about, like spiralling and staying at that low place in my life. Yeah. So, yeah, maybe journaling and being less harsh on yourself if you are f feeling those nasty emotions that we can feel from grief, like jealousy, mm. anger, um, and lashing out on those around you, you know? No, I agree. I actually do agree with the whole, like, Christmas time, get me off social media. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm so grateful to have the family that I am, but I don't need to see everyone's perfect Christmas photos. It does make me a bit upset, because yeah, I'm human. Agree. That's the thing. <laughs> okay, we're going to move on to Lottie. So, do you want to tell us a little bit about why you're here and your journey with grief? Yes, yeah, so I lost my mum about seven years ago and then I lost my sister a couple of years later. So it was quite a lot in a short space of time. And I think at the time I never thought I'd find happiness again. So then once I did, I really wanted to show people that they can also, you know, come through it and it doesn't have to like define your life, you know. So I think that's why I want to speak out and tell my story. 100%. Um, so if you could tell your younger self something before you experienced the grief, what would it be? I think it would be just that, like telling myself that I could find happiness again because you're so adamant that you can't. Mm -hmm. And like if someone would have just, if I'd have been able to tell myself that, I think that's why grief can be so consuming and like so dark because you just, you can't see a life past it. Mm -hmm. So I think having that reminder would have been so nice in those early days. I remember ha having a therapy session at the very beginning and just being like, I want to be happy like I used to be. Yeah. And my therapist was like, that's, a, that, like, that's great that you still want to be happy. Yeah. She was like, but it's going to be different. Like mm. you're going to look back in years to come and realize it's a different happiness yeah. and that's okay. Yeah, definitely. Um, so a lot of us won't have experienced this, but obviously you went through your grief journey and that was also publicly as well. Mm -hmm. How did that affect it for you? I think it was different because everyone knows every detail of you know what you've been through and often with death it's quite personal mm -hmm. and it's not always you know just an illness, it can be someone's own personal struggles. So I think that is quite hard because it, you feel quite protective over who you've lost. But at the same time, you feel like support of everyone. Mm -hmm. And like, I feel really lucky that I had that, you know, everyone kind of rallied around us and wanted to show the support and show the love and, f you know, felt for us. So I don't see it as a negative thing. I think it was quite nice for me to feel like that support. Yeah. And obviously you've had your little boy, Lucky. Yeah. He is so cute, <laughs> honestly. He is, he is cute. <laughs> Very cute. Um, so how has he impacted your grief journey? feel like when you've lost life out of your life bringing new life into it feels even more special and like more meaningful because you know how precious that mm. is and it's almost like gives you like a light that you kind of lost so that changed everything for me since having him it's given me a purpose it's given me like fresh life and yeah it's it's completely changed my whole life I agree, honestly. My nephew is like the best thing that's ever happened to me. Yes. Mum will agree with me. I mean, I hope his own mother would agree with me. <laughs> um, but I agree. B babies yeah. and just new lives is just, it almost feels like a fresh start yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, it does. It really does. Um, and you're also launching your book, yeah. which is so exciting. How did you find writing that and, you know, reliving those days again? It's been quite intense and I think when you get to a good point in your grief you're kind of like oh yeah I can deal with that I can you know I can talk about it. I can tell my story and then you know you're getting down to like the details and you're like actually this is quite tough because you do bury some of those really dark days but it's almost been like therapy like it's kind of helped me relive it but also show myself that I've, been, that I've come through it and like makes me feel quite proud of my story and hopefully I'll help people with it. So that gives me like a lot of, that does a lot for me. Yeah. yeah. No, 100%. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mama Grimes. Thank you. Now this is where we have to literally snatch the mic out of her hand because <laughs> she talks for England. I wonder where I get it from. Poland actually. <laughs> True. Do you want to start off by telling everyone why you are here? Apart from the fact that I forced you. I didn't, I promise. <laughs> Um, we've lost Papa G, uh, the dad of Misha and Anya, um, three years in August. Yeah, I know. Sorry, I said two years. <laughs> two and a half. Um, and 
I'm here because obviously I'm supporting my daughter, but this is a real opportunity to say how proud we are, uh, the whole family. Uh, I've been getting text messages and what you do is outstanding and amazing. And no doubt, daddy's looking down and saying, well done, Mish. <laughs> 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 It was supposed to be about your story, yeah. not me. No, I mean, he was a legend, wasn't yeah. he? We all know that. So you carrying on, and that's amazing, because he will always be alive in our hearts. I think that's a, like, obviously everyone deals with grief very differently, and, like, maybe my family are weird that we talk yeah. about him constantly. Like, we can't keep Dad's name out of our mouths. Mm. Um, but that works for us. So, you know, that is, goes back to the whole everyone deals with things differently. Yeah. Now, your first question. Mm-hmm. Now, we are an incredibly close family, so how did you find the shift of becoming a single parent whilst navigating your own grief and then supporting us girls? Big old question. Mm. I think we did it right for us. We stuck together like glue, if you remember. Mm -hmm. And actually, I think it was the toughest for you because when we were together, three of us, it felt okay, mm -hmm. but when you went away and you were on your own, Jake over there, thank you. Thank you for all the support. She's supposed to be telling us on. She's <laughs> not talking about me. What's going on? <laughs> um, I had the strength to get up every morning and live the life for both Dad and I. Um, I had my dark moments and I will continue but what personally helped me was that I would have my dark moment and then the next day I would face down the girls or I'd leave them the message and I will tell them about my dark moment yeah. I didn't want to deal with it you know there and then so I didn't want to hide uh, my emotions and I've got to say Anya has been the absolute rock for both me Agreed. and Nisha um, she's a lot more like like John was, um, the positive sides anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Whilst Misha and I... Um, Promotional oh, Rex. Yes, that's <laughs> the word I was looking for. Um, been very, very lucky because uh, we're very close to John's family. Mm -hmm. So we had the support all around us and everyone was checking in on us. And um, I was, again, very, very lucky because Anya... Um, Anya... John passed away in August. We had the announcement of um, Anya's pregnancy in December. And Anya was in the process of uh, renovating her first home and actually lived with me, <laughs> which was an amazing cushion. And again, without that, I don't think I could cope as well. So um, Now Anya she's got rid of us and she's really <laughs> yeah. happy. Uh, Anya's <laughs> boyfriend moved in with us. And then, of course, Oakley came along. And they only moved out in April last year. And I've got to say that um, this winter was very, very tough. Uh, very tough because obviously it was the first time that I was on my own. The days were short, so I couldn't be gallivanting in town. Um, but I got through it and I promised myself to go on lots of holidays during the winter time. <laughs> <laughs> Distraction is very, very good. But I, I know people say um, time is the only not cure, healer. but time is the only healer. And um, I know that he's always with me, you know, whenever my dog does a poo and, and I haven't got a poo back, I can literally hear him, come on, <laughs> put your trolley away, take the poo away. They just live with you forever. And um, we are weird as a family and yeah. I'm sorry, I know I've gone on forever now, but Actually. on John's first, 60th birthday, quite an important birthday. We, we all went away, well, the girls, um, and we celebrated it. We got him his favorite bottle of red wine. We got him a card. We got him the balloons, and that's our way of coping with it. But it doesn't mean that it's right for everyone. But also, it was very tough, just going back to when John got diagnosed for best part of two years during COVID, no one ever knew. And we had to move home, and unfortunately there was a degree of you know, negativity surrounding that. And I'll never forget the day that Misha said, okay, I'm now ready, Dad's passed away, I'm ready to do the video. And we sat there together and we did it. And I 
I don't want to watch that video. <laughs> I'm never watching that video ever yeah. again. <laughs> and and also from my experience, what's I know I'm going on. Sorry. What's really interesting is that that um, because I've got his pictures around the house, I'm very very comfortable. But I'm still at a stage that when Misha posts a video of him and doesn't warn me, um, I'm not ready. Whoopsies. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll text her before I posted yeah. like a reel or something just to give her a pre-warning. Um, now, my next question is to do with caring for dad. Now, just to give a little bit of background, as I said, my dad was diagnosed two years prior and we as a family cared for him. Now, that largely did fall on my mum and my sister because I, I wasn't at home at that time. So what would be your advice for anyone who is in the same position and caring for their loved ones? Um not to be judgmental about how people want to do it. Um, we chose to be with him. However, at the end, um, we did get overnight help in the last two weeks, and it was the best thing we could have done because we could enjoy quality time with him during the day. So, But that was just our way of dealing with it, and it was very, very tough. I mean, John was amazing. I mean to his dying day. Uh, he was watching Love Island, wasn't he? And that and Big Bang Theory. Yeah. The and Euros, uh, was, it, was it the oh year yeah, of the Euros that they football. literally lost? Yeah. And then we were like, okay, well, <laughs> he's gonna pop his clogs now. He's like, they've lost the football, might as well. <laughs> so he remained very jovial uh, and himself to, to, to the bitter end. But yes, it was right for us to do. It was also COVID. So it was actually easier because we couldn't go out. You know, we couldn't do the things that we normally would. So, in a way, we were lucky. Thank you so much, Mama. We are going to move on to James, but we'll just have a little round of applause for Mum. <laughs> Hello over there. <laughs> Hi. So, would you like to share with everyone why you are here today and your journey with grief? Um, so, my dad died four day, two years in four days. Um, just randomly got a blocked artery, was gardening one day and then just collapsed. Um, yeah, it was quite a hard day. Got a random call from my mum. I'm not very good at picking pick, pick, pick up the phone, so I actually didn't answer the first time, and then called again and again. And yeah, it wasn't best time in my life, and I'm still kind of, I don't even know if I'm actually grieving yet. Um, but yeah, I kind of started voicing it a bit more on social media, connected to quite a few people. Um, and I guess here we are. Thank you. So I know, and maybe some of these people know, that fitness is a huge part of your life. Do you think fitness has played a role in your grief journey? Yeah, must have. I mean, I was always into fitness anyway. Mm -hmm. um, I think it definitely became more of like a compensation sort of mechanism afterwards. Um, but on the same kind of, on like the other side of the coin, I think it's a vice of mine because mm -hmm. I depend on it and I've been injured like in this two year period and my mental health's just like bombed. Um, but there was like a study that came out that people who have sort of been through trauma and grief um, kind of turned to endurance sports as a way to escape. And I think I've definitely done that. Don't know if anyone else has, but <laughs> recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, thing is, me and James went to an event and we basically bonded over having the same story. So I feel like I've heard a lot of his story and the way that he sees things. And we discussed about like our mindsets shifting and how much has changed since losing our dads. Do you want to share with everyone about that and like how your mindset has shifted after losing him? I'm definitely more impulsive. Um, so like, I mean, I had like one tattoo when I first went before he died and I've now got like eight or nine. Um, <laughs> I think I actually got most of them in the space of like two months. Um, a few regrets, but we'll come to that another point. Um, I think I just kind of start seeing life as being so short and I was sort of on the corporate ladder, like I was very much grinding away, wanting to reach the top, and I, just, I couldn't think of anything worse afterwards. Um, like it wasn't very fulfilling. I wasn't doing what I wanted to do. I wasn't looking up to anyone above me. So I found myself in a bit of a rut. People who don't know, I took a bit of a career break for about three months, um, traveled around like Australia, New Zealand. Don't know if it helped me or not, um, but I came back and I definitely just wanted something different. Um, so I took a completely different career path. Um, so I guess, yeah, the outlook's changed quite a lot. Life is short. Life is short. So the next question is something that I, uh, we lost our dads in different ways. And I obviously see it as, you know, I lost him slowly and over time, but it was different for you. How do you feel like that's affected you? Because as you said, it was like one day there, one day not. And it's, from my perspective, I'm like, wow, like how have you mentally processed that? It's hard because like 
yeah, you had more time to process it and might kind of like rip the band-aid off. But I think it's also delayed my grief massively. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I mean, for context, I call my dad every day. Um, we're like best friends. Look, now I'm gonna be the first one to cry. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, you just realize he's not there anymore. Um, so like, kind of when I get random calls, it just scares me now. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't really know how to answer that no. question. <laughs> no, you've done an amazing job. And like, oh, does it call everyone's in tears? <laughs> you set everyone up. But sorry, I love that. I love that you are the first one because I just think that just shows how important mental health is also for men because we all, we all just, you know, don't necessarily... I feel like guys get that, like, slap stamp of, like, you're a bloke, you don't need to be upset. Like, things don't affect you in the same way, but they do. Like, just because you're male, you're still human. Thank you so much. Like, honestly, I know how much you being so raw will mean to everyone. And can you please go and give your girl a hug because I'm literally <laughs> like crying over here. I promise I won't ask him any more questions. <laughs> Is that me done now? Yeah, you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> take five, take five. <laughs> Hello, Amber. Hello. Would you like to share with us why you are here and you know your journey with grief? Of course. I just want to say. I so relate with you um, because of that suddenness too, just the ripping of the band-aid, just your life has just changed at the drop of a hat and you just think, how do I adjust to this? So I hard relate and I see you and thank you for your vulnerability. Um, so my name is Amber. My story dates back all the way to 2016. I feel sometimes a bit like a veteran in grief, like I've been carrying this bloody rucksack of grief for a very long time. And though being yeah, eight years, nearly this year into grief, I'm still learning about it. But my story uh, is birthed from the death of my mum in 2016. And I was 19 at the time. And she suffered a sudden heart attack too. And was just here one day and gone the next. And from then, you'll just see th- however your person dies, you're just thrust into a world without them. And there is no blueprint to this. There's no one to say, OK, when this happens in life, follow these steps. I mean, they say about the five stages of grief, but we all know it's absolute bollocks. <laughs> um, you know. We, 75 I, stages. Yeah, yeah, it's like stages who? It's just so... Eight. There's actually eight stages of grief. Oh. I've learned that it's cool, and every time I hear this, it sounds like there's actually like five stages of grief. I'm like, there's actually eight stages of grief. Oh, do you know actually amazing facts of it? The five stages of grief actually wasn't depicted for grief. It was for it was for people who were dying. So, but it, I think when in, as humans we're so desperate for something to say, here you go, this is how you do it, that we will take anything and run with it. So I don't blame for us to wanting to follow the five stages of grief because we're just like anything that's going to get me from A to Z, something please. And that is kind of I think what I did for three years after my mum died. I was like I said nineteen. I felt like I was at such a coming of age age. I was like, who the hell am I? And who am I without the person who's brought me into this world? And I kind of just kept my head down for three years. I went back to work four days after my mum died. I was just like, workhorse, workhorse. And I hit three years and I just went, oh, me and grief, we've not spoken at all. And it just came hard and fast at me. And it just debilitated my mental health, my well-being. And I was in the most darkest place of my life. And I literally went from one extreme to the other of going, I'm in such a depressive, borderline suicidal state in my life, to going, I need to find other people. And I know what will help me is finding other people. So to my friends and my family, it was a real erratic time. I literally was like, I'm really sad. I don't think I want to be here. To then, I think I want to find other people and I want to help them. And therefore, the grief gang was born. And I just went to my friends and family and went, it all started off this really bad holiday in Morocco. And I'm still yet to go back to Morocco to kind of like rewrite it again. But I had awful, basically diarrhea. It was horrific. <laughs> <laughs> but in that delusion, I was like, oh, I'm going to start a podcast. <laughs> and my boyfriend was like, what the fuck? And I was like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And I ran away and, and I was like, what are you going to call it? I was like, the grief gang, because it's the gang you never want to be part of. And you never asked to be a part of it. And I came home and I hit the ground running. And I remember just saying to myself, if I can just find one other girl who's lost her mum, I'll be happy. I'll feel like I'm not an alien in this world anymore. And then over time, it just grew and grew and grew. 
and I've met amazing people from all across the world, all different life um, stories of life and loss, and sharing their stories on the podcast and the online community, and it's now my life's work. And I never could have known grief work could have been such life-affirming and inspiring work, so that's my story. Such beautiful words. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Now, we know that you help people along their grief journey, not only with the podcast, but also I know you do like one-to-ones. How do you feel like hearing other people's stories has helped your journey with grief? It's definitely made me open to that the different ways that we grieve is okay. I think, um, as we've just touched on earlier, the five stages of grief of some of us might want to turn to that and lean more into that, but being for me with my work, whether that's through the social media platforms, through the mentoring, the one-to-one in the group, is that I am being exposed to so many people's different stories, how they grieve, and like I was saying with you earlier, to talk about grief is to talk about living and how you want to live your life. When you have been exposed to such tragedies in your life, you know, I, I, often more than not, if I'm in like a party or something, I'll find myself naturally gravitating to someone and I'll start talking and somehow or another I'll find out that, that someone has died in their life. There's just something we kind of like gravitate to each other. It's like this radar and kind of what happens with the circles is kind of like we're all coming together and talking about it and having shared experience and why I started Grief Gang in the first place was because I was so isolated in it and I thought, I'm going mad, I'm going mad here. And so through the mentoring is hopefully what I'm trying to offer that to other people of to say, come, you're not alone. And how you grieve doesn't have to be, you have to be ashamed of it or embarrassed. Like how you said earlier of like, oh, you think we're weird because you talk about dad. That's amazing. That's As we said, you know, we feel like our people live with us, whether you're, you know, spiritually inclined or not. When you're hearing other people say like oh yeah like we talk about our dad all the time and you're going oh yeah me too and you feel less weird and alone so we all want to have shared experience we all don't want to feel like we've been sort of picked out and singled out in the world to just face these tragedies you know no 100 percent. and what would be the biggest piece of advice that you would give to someone who's recently faced loss take your time and don't listen to if you don't want to the way society tells you how to grieve and what pace you should be at and how you should be doing it how you should be conveying it I'm sure plenty of people probably think me talking about grief online or on a podcast thinking oh that's a bit too much and that's absolutely fine not everyone's a cup of tea but then I would never ever um you know banish somebody for who wants to be a bit more insular and talk about their grief in their own time we all do it differently and my biggest advice is whatever that is as long as it's not harming yourself or those around you run with it like it doesn't have to make sense to anybody like how when we were talking earlier of you know running and people are saying you know running can be really cathartic and healing for our grief me probably three years ago i would have think you're weird <laughs> now <laughs> but then now i'm in it and i get it and just being open of like we all do it differently we're all just trying to cope every day no matter what we've gone through so however you're coping just run with it block out the noise and put you first and Go where that love and that support is and don't look for it in places where you're not going to get it. Places like this where you can come and you can find it. There are people who want to hear about your grief and in turn hear about your people too as well. You don't have to be like, okay, they've died. That's the end of that. We can talk about them if we want to and what a blessing that is. I love that and I agree, yeah. Even like Molly, she's never met my dad. She, he, she didn't exist before my dad passed away. Now she knows everything about him. <laughs> It's like, I don't know how, but I must just not shut up about him. <laughs> Thank you so much. Marlin, at the very end. Hello. Would you like to tell us why you're Sorry, here? I'm just going to sit up straight. No, don't, my that's me. Far. I'm literally... Right. Okay. Yeah, should we all just take a moment to breathe? Stretch your backs. <laughs> Get that energy flowing for your body, guys. In through the nose, out through the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I'll let you take it away if you just want to share why you're here today. Yeah, so I think all I've ever known is grief. God. So... I was born, and then my dad died when I was around one years old, skin cancer. Um, and my mum raised us all um, as a single mum, four of us, and she was brilliant. And then she got cancer when I was 25. I think I just came out, no, she got cancer when I was nine years old, and then it returned when I was 25. And I'd just come out the villa then, um, off Love Island. And um, I was in a lot of denial. I was in my party days, trying to live my life, um, not really accept kind of what was happening. So I was really kind of running away from her kind of dying, if that makes sense. I knew it was coming, but I don't want to face it. Anyway, she died. I talk about it really bluntly, by the way, because in my head, I've processed it and I've dealt with it and it comes up in different ways, but I found myself through it now. So 
I talk about it like it's a timeline because there have been so many traumatic events in my life, it becomes a timeline of events. So she passed away and I then met a really narcissistic man and um, I fell in love with him. I had a baby with him and it was a domestically abusive relationship. He beat me whilst I was pregnant and then um, I think this affects me a bit more because I get a bit shaky with this bit. And um, I gave birth to a beautiful little girl called Concy and yeah, then she passed away after a month in Great Ormond Street. So my grief was very, very sandwiched together. And so what I noticed was that after she died, all I wanted to do was run. I ran away from life. I ran away from being, living, functioning. I drank, I took drugs, I smoked, I partied. I didn't want to exist in my head. My mind consciously wasn't in this earth. It was somewhere far, far away. I felt like an orphan. I had no parents to, to turn to. My family were not very close, so you saying you could have a unit was, that's amazing. Um, I wish I had that. I've never really had good friendships in my life. They've all been fake or shit, negative twats. <laughs> um, and, you know, and being in the industry, Lottie probably knows there's not that much support in it. You feel very isolated and lonely. So I've, I've always been a bit of a weird introvert, but I've embraced it and used my loneliness to grow through it. So I had a huge spiritual awakening. Um, at 25 when my mum died. I looked at her body and all I could see was an, a body and her vessel and her soul had gone. And then my conscious mind literally broke through and all of the beliefs that I've had, ever had since being a little girl broke through my system and I just saw life with a HD, like with HD vision. My goggles were off and I could see everything for what it was. So it then kind of got through me meeting my ex and having my baby and then her passing away and then me kind of just functioning like a zombie through life to kind of beat the grief in a sense of I couldn't drink anymore, I couldn't take cocaine anymore, I couldn't party anymore, I couldn't run away, be this person on social media, need validation, need all that likes, all of that crap. I had to face what was going on inside. So the healing began and what healing means to me is rewiring, sorry, rewiring your subconscious brain and reprogramming those limiting beliefs that I've had my whole entire life since I was a little girl. Not having my dad around, finding the wrong men because I didn't have my dad to show me what it was like. All of these self-love limiting beliefs I needed to work through and it took hitting a rock bottom of me avoiding my grief and all the other pain that I've gone through to face it. And that's unfortunately what it takes sometimes. It takes a huge rock bottom, might be multiple, until the universe is like, girl, fucking wake, sorry, fuck, wake up, <laughs> you know, and deal with it and face, face, the, face the fear. And I think with me, emotion was always hidden within me. And it manifested through my body, through psoriasis, through other things. And, and you know, you just have to kind of wake up to it and be like, okay, I'm going to start going through all these little bits of pain. And, and I did it. And it's been a working progress. And I'm in such a different headspace where... I feel like invincible almost. It's like I'm not living anymore. Happiness is within me. I turned inward and I found the happiness. And I'll just live through that now. Thank you for sharing <laughs> your story. That's really, really inspiring. Um, I know you've, you've got your little girl. How has that you know, affected your journey along the way? Yeah, so I've got my two-year-old Zaya. She's an absolute nut job. <laughs> she's brilliant. <laughs> and she's, she saved me in a sense of giving me purpose back. But as I say, when you try to find yourself, nothing external outside of you can heal you. You can heal yourself, but you can't use anyone else or anything shopping, any, anything else to give you that dopamine hit or even another person. You have to do it yourself, right? And she's given me a new, new lease of life, like Lottie said, you know, it's, it's a beautiful thing, having, like, creating something. Um, and you also released your book, Positivity is Your Superpower, and obviously you really openly share your story on social media. So what do you think has been the best thing that has come out of this journey? Because I love how you talk about being in the pits of it, but now being so positive, like, honestly, it's so inspiring. Do you know what? You'd look at it and be like, nothing good comes from grief. Like, what the heck could come from grief? But actually, my mum had to die. My dad had to die. My daughter had to die. I had to go through all this crap in my life to find out who I was. And the best thing that came from the grief was me, Marlin. Marlin Anderson. Who is she? And I ask myself that question every day. And I look in the mirror, I'm like, who are you really? You're not your name. You're not your personality. You're not your mum. You're not your dad. You are you. And you found yourself through all of the pain amidst all the suffering. 
And sometimes, as I said before, it takes a suffering and an open heart to find yourself, so. No, I completely agree. I'm the first person to talk on socials about how different I am since losing my dad. And I prefer this version. Like, I'm so much prouder of this mm. person because she's gone through that and she's, you know, realised how fragile so many things are in the world and you've only got one life and you've got to live it and you've got to live it to its fullest. So thank you so much. Whilst, whilst we're playing the this as on you guys, like, something what we did that's come up. Should we all go along yeah. and just give an answer? So my positive thing would probably be the person that it's made me become. I was very sheltered growing up. I lived in a bubble. I didn't really understand mental health. I kind of thought people were making it up. Like, I just didn't get it. And I appreciate my lowest lows because they've made me the person that I am to get today. So much more grounded, so much more understanding. I feel like I... It's almost like my soul is reawoken and I now have my purpose in life. So, of course, I'd love to change it all. But I'm grateful that I got out of it, the purpose. So I think it has to be the community that I um, I found, I guess, from losing people in my life. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's fine. Yeah, finding people that are on the same wavelength as you, even if like the people close to the situation, like we're saying, up at the centre point of the grief and of hate finding other people who have also experienced that but have a bit of a disconnect from it and being able to open up and talk and that's kind of become like my therapy, I guess, like things like this. So, yeah, the community for me is what was it. I think for me it's the resilience that it's given me, like I really feel like that's my superpower now, like everything that life throws at you after you've dealt with something like as heavy as a loss and grief kind of feels like you can do it. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I feel like that is... It's such a seems bad to have. I'm gonna think about it. <laughs> um, one's probably noticing my dad's mannerisms and like idiosyncrasies in my own like things that I do. Um, I do sit and piss out of him for listening to music for like three hours, just on the sofa by himself, and I like to do it. <laughs> so I think it's just seeing that side of him in me more. No, shouldn't really see. Yeah. <laughs> um, He's definitely made me a better person, uh, without a doubt. And he's always on my shoulder telling me where I'm going wrong. And, and I don't know how, but very often I get moments where I've been thinking about something very, very simple for goodness knows how long. And suddenly it's like a light bulb moment. Suddenly I've got an answer. Uh, I say my positive thing is grief has definitely made me just like cut the shit in life, just in all aspects of it, my perspective of what I really want to do with my life, how do I want to live my life, who do I want in it? And I think before it was a bit of a, it would probably tease from the negative side of being like, I just don't really care about anything. But actually it's just maybe hone in on what are the things you really do care about and how you're going to apply yourself to it. So just there's just so much more clarity. For, it's for grief that was so foggy in the beginning of, of my, my journey. Um, the way it's just given me so much clarity of like, that really doesn't matter and that does to me and I'm really going to make sure that that person or that endeavour knows that it really matters to me. So it's definitely just made me, yeah, really cut the shit out of life and I'm really <clears throat> happy for that perspective, yeah. <laughs> And for me, I think I found the utmost compassion in other human beings. I see people very differently now. Like every person that I come across, whether it's at the shop, at Tesco's, or whatever, I, wherever I am, I see that this person has a story, a backstory, a life. They have their own suffering. They have their own, you know, personal whatever they're up to. And I think judgment comes a lot with us as human beings, doesn't it? And I think when you go through grief all of that kind of ends within you and you just see life very differently and we see everybody around us with compassion and forgiveness so i think definitely that sorry i'm still on thanks and we're done well okay i feel like should we all take a big deep breath you know all the hard conversations are over now and everyone Thank you so much to every single one of you for coming here. Thank you so much to all of you for being here. Can we have a massive round of applause for our... Um, I also just want to say a massive thank you to Gymshark and Tanologist for sponsoring this event. Woo! Because we wouldn't be here and we wouldn't be able to raise so much money from Indy if they won. And last but not least, I need to say a very big thank you to the girl that is nodding her head no. and doesn't want to get a thank you. Come here. No. Come here. I might be the face, but this is also part of the brains. And 
Guys, I honestly don't know what I do about Marl. I don't know how I got this lucky. <laughs> And I would not have the strength and the, the be so brave to be able to do this if I didn't have this woman stood behind me, beside me, behind me, I don't mean behind me, <laughs> beside me, always beside me. Um, so can we have a massive round of applause for Mark? That also for me, because she is incredible and getting to do this with her and getting to work with my best friend is the best and getting to meet so many amazing people like you all. And yeah, I'm just so glad that I found you and yeah. it's actually been a year since me and Mom started working together. So we're a little bit emotional anyway. It's been a big year. Everyone get the biggest smiles ready. Yeah, I'm gonna drop you Woo! Thank you so so much. Um, if you want to shimmy out your chairs, if you want to just throw your... Also, thank you to my family for being the best ever. I'm not going to go on.